Hey there, friends. It is Aussie Grimm with the Gamers Grimm. And today we're going to go through another one of my city builds here on the Adventure Time server. Um, it is a foggy morning here in the Dark Forest. And we are going to go through Njordvale. It's a port a city that I built some time ago. Uh, I really... I did an earlier video. I didn't like how that video turned out. Um, the city wasn't finished at the time, and I was trying to rush it out because I was in a hurry to get out content. It was uh, a couple of months ago when I was still getting my YouTube channel up and running, and uh, lessons learned. Don't uh, release videos that aren't ready to go yet. Uh, thankfully, nobody saw it. Um, but this is the port city of Nordvale. It is kind of based on the Baldur's Gate uh, city from the Baldur's Gate series and Dungeons and Dragons because it has a big sea wall and is a river to sea port city. Um, I did start the city before Baldur's Gate 3 came out, uh, so I had no intention of uh, trying to line it up, but it kind of worked out that way, and uh, I'm happier for it. Uh, but it is a beautiful morning uh, settling over the city this morning. So, uh, yeah, this is this was a fun city build. Uh, you'll see some of the older materials kind of intermixed with the newer materials because uh, this city was sort of in, uh, in, in the process when the newer materials from Hearth and Home and Mistlands and Ashlands came out. Uh, but yeah, it's a beautiful sunrise morning coming up over the city here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just do a quick walking tour of Njordvale. Of course, we do have the sea wall with a uh, sea fort, as you see here. This is where you would come in uh, in the city and see it. But a yeah, beautiful morning out here on the sea wall, as you see coming into the city. Wow, that just looks good. You know what? I think we're going to turn the UI off. Uh, that way you guys can see a little bit better. It's not as uh, obstructed while we're going through the cities. Um, but yeah, Ooh, there's a little fish there. Can I pick that up? Yeah, what is that? Oh, I can't see. I've got the UI off. All right, it's fine. But so we'll follow the sea wall here. It's got some ballistae on it. And uh, we'll run around just like this. It's been an interesting morning. I've had a lot of allergies today. Uh, it's going into the 4th on the, on the year 2024. There is a little bit of a troll over there. So let's go ahead and bonk him because we don't want him making any sort of trouble for us while we're doing this tour. But we'll come off the seawall that wraps around and into the city like this. And then there is a gate out into the forest, as you see here. Um, the thing about Njordvale that has frustrated me since I started building it is, we'll turn the UI back on, part of what I don't like about Njordvale is Njordvale and Loken's Fall. Uh, Loken's Fall was a failed build that I did. Uh, I built a Minas Morgul uh, in the old Mistlands biome, and when the Mistlands came out, it completely destroyed it. Uh, all that remains of it is uh, crazy remnants of what, what, of what once was. So as you can see over on the main island, this is where I've done most of my builds. And Njordvale is way over here. Um, it's because I really wanted this port to be on a river mouth uh, connected to Loken's Fall. So it was... Uh, I wish I could have done it a little bit differently and had it over here with all the other cities. Uh, so this is sort of a separate city from the rest. Uh, but I do love this city because it's got this very sort of uh, high fantasy, dark fantasy sort of feel to it. Uh, you know, we've got some uh, houses here. So, you know, oh, this one's not decorated. Uh, well, that's how that works. Uh, not all of them are decorated. This is a city that I've kind of abandoned at this point. Uh, but I still love the city. Because uh, I, I invented a lot of interesting ways to build. I, built my, I learned how to build my own uh, lamp posts. And uh, did some kind of crazy things with the sewers. 
you know, we'll see. We got some houses here, and then we got some big estate houses here inside the main city. Of course, here's like the uh, the manor of the four, or like the lord's manor. Did this wrapping sort of staircase that went up and around, like you see here. Yeah, look at that's such a cool little little design. It goes up, and then we'll go in through the kitchen. You know, they added pots and pans, and then there's like a dining area. And I think if I go up here, this is like the master's like dining area. And then there's a nice balcony that overlooks the city from the Lord's uh, chambers. We'll head out and we'll jump down. And this, of course, goes over here. This goes out into the woods. And then there's like a yard area just want to move around the city so you guys can see uh, all the stuff there's the woods back there the forest and we'll keep heading into the city it's just so much to show you in a lot of these cities that i build i get really crazy with it i think i'm probably one of the crazier builders on the internet with uh, the size and scale uh, that i build with uh, this city slows down a little bit there are people who ask uh, what my FPS is. Uh, usually it's about 20 in uh, some of the larger cities, 25. Uh, but I do see spikes of 30 and 40, uh, which is not great for gaming. Um, but these are for looks. These are role-playing areas. That's what I think of them as. Uh, if, I could, if I had a dream for my Adventure Time server, it would be that uh, when I finish... Uh, up these last couple of cities on the main island. I'm going to release the file, the save file to the public so that people can uh, use them as a, like an RP server because there's names and lore and they can go out and just sort of explore. And maybe it's not, uh, you know, a city that you're going to use uh, to do like a live playthrough and hunt down bosses. Uh, but it's, it could be some, a fun place for people to, to get on and and RP and explore, and that's kind of what I would like. Uh, we're gonna go down into the first, on the first side here. Uh, part of the reason I really enjoyed this particular uh, city build was I built sewers in this city, which is why it's one of the laggier uh, cities that I have built, is because uh, these, these are all carved out uh, appropriately and have, will it let me open it? There we go. But I, I dug out and carved out sewers underneath the city, which at the expense of just being really interesting and fun, uh, also created a whole lot more instances uh, of items which can, at the same time, be very, very rough. That is not letting me go back there anymore. That usually connects to the well that you saw up in the city. Um, so, yeah... <laughs> But this is the sewer on th this side of the city, and yes, there is a sewer uh, on the other side of the city. We'll, but we'll just keep on going. I you know, decorated the docks. I built all my own crates uh, using all sorts of little techniques. You can see there, that's how you can kind of build like a little crate is with a couple of signs and a couple of trophy uh a, a trophy racks, as you see there, and it kind of looks like a box that you can carry. Uh, no, that seems crazy, but, you know, looks that way to me. Um, but we'll keep going. That was the inn that we were in, the Royal Regency Inn. We're going to cross the River Bridge and enter into the Trade District, which, again, is one of my favorite things. We've got the Merchant's Guild Warehouse and the Commerce District. With uh, This is the kind of the pride and the joy of this city is, of course, the clock tower that I built. Uh, of course, there is no clock. Uh, there is a clock on the other side of the river that actually functions. Uh, so we'll run over there, but that's the clock tower that I built. A lot of fun to build that. It was, I think it looks really good there, here on this edge of the uh, Commerce City. But one of the things I will show you is that, uh, for those who don't know, you can build an actual functioning sundial in this game. And we'll go over to the sundial, which is right here. And as you can see, it's a sundial. And it is about noon right now, see? You can see it's almost straight o'clock noon, and we're moving along. It's going to be 1 o'clock very, very soon. 
Um, but yeah, you can build a functioning sundial like this in your game. All you have to do is face your uh, first plank of wood, like you see there, directly north. And then you can fan everything out from there, and it is a functioning clock. So this clock is actually telling the time in the game. It's about, uh, about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock now. We're getting close to uh, mid-afternoon, thanks to my sundial. Very useful uh, in a real playthrough. Uh, that's where I learned how to do it, because you can uh, tell what time it is. Just run over, check your sundial, and you can decide whether or not you really want to head out to to farm that last couple of stacks of wood or stone or copper or hang out at the camp for a little bit so that you can zonk out for the night and uh, wait until morning so you don't accidentally get caught out uh, at night because you can't really quite tell what time it is during the day. But I have a real clock and then I have, of course, a fake clock. The fake clock always shows 3 o'clock because uh, that's just what it does. But I know this is going to seem a little bit crazy, but this is one of the reasons that I enjoy doing these builds is I find little interesting ways to do things. Uh, most notably, I made it to where this looks like there's actually moving parts inside of the clock tower. Uh, it's really just a piece of uh, uh, trade skill stuff. I think that goes with the uh, artisan table, but it looks kind of cool to look through the door and see like moving parts. To my uh, clock tower and then of course this is the clock tower keeper's house and but we'll head down a little further into the commerce district and just kind of have a look around of course we've got tastes of the forest and the stabby end daggers and locks of legs and doughboy breads and then of course a uh, reno 911 reference terry's tacos 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 any reno 911 fans will recognize that uh, fish, kind of a corny thing, but, you know, it is what it is. And then there's Fjord's Shipwright Company. That's a critical role uh, reference. Uh, it's a C Campaign 2 character uh, played by uh, uh, Travis Willingham. I had a lot of fun watching that. I'm a big D&D &D fan. I enjoy uh, especially watching uh, Critical Role. Though I haven't really watched as much of the, the latest campaign uh, as I did the first two. But that's because I've been busy, and I'll try to catch up at some point. Uh, but we'll head uh, down along the docks. One of the other things that I built that was kind of neat was uh, these cranes. If you look, I did some, did some wild things to make the cranes look as functional as possible. You see they've got uh, the grinding wheel and an upside-down torch that hangs. that even makes them look like there's rope. Uh, I've got serious problems when it comes to building. But uh, here's another way that you can build some crates. You can do four uh, of these uh, signs with a little floor piece in the top. And uh, there's some more carrying crates there. You see, two, two signs and uh, two trophy uh, mounts. And it can look like you've got yourself a box of fish uh, there. And then, of course, just your standard square box made with regular wood. And you can have crates. Although... I did do this where I filled up an entire uh, cart and then just broke the cart and left the boxes on the ground. Uh, not as good, I think, as the ones that I made, but, you know, they, they do the job. So, you know, that's how that goes. And then you can always throw down the uh, occasional uh, barrel, fermenting barrel, and it just looks good with a bucket right next to it. It definitely looks like a well-used area. And then we will head over here, and we will go down into the Commerce Sides District, like you see here. And if we see these things, I know this is silly, but I actually connected uh, the roads down to the sewers like they actually drained. But... No good Dungeons & Dragons sewer would not be complete without a Shrine of the Undead hidden beneath it. Uh, one of the things that happened with this was I put the old Bone Mass trophy up in here. And when they updated the trophy, the trophy came, grew in size. And I'll be honest, I'm glad that it did because it looks absolutely bonkers down here now. 
uh, and it pushed a lot of the skulls and stuff down and the stone down and out of the way uh, to sort of adjust for it. And as a result, I think it looks much better to have this death shrine as it is. So I would never take anything off of there simply because it probably would ruin the way that it looks. Uh, but the sewers come back out here underneath the shipwright company and back out onto the docks like you see there. Um, and we'll keep on scooting through the Commerce District. We've got ourselves the uh, Blacksmith here, the Iron Hand Armor, and then the Trader's Post, which is an amazing name. I, I like naming all of my stuff, the second hood, Secondhand Goods of Questionable Origin and Procurement. So a little bit of dad joke uh, wordplay there, but this is the Trader. And then, of course, we have ourselves the Maiden's Jest End. This is the local inn that you could come and rent a room from if you wanted. Um, so we'll keep on trucking. So we went over and did the residential district. We've done the commerce district. And then we will swing back around because, again, these are, these are big cities. And then we've got Shits and Giggle. Uh, that's another reference. And then that's another reference as well just because I was bored. But we'll go past the warehouse and down the road. And you'll see that we've got uh, a bit more city to go through. Uh, so this is sort of like the riverside part of the city. Uh, there's a nice fishing dock that comes down here. And uh, you could maybe put in a boat or take a boat out if you had to. But there is some fishing area with some fishing poles. Lots and lots and lots of stuff to do. Um, got ourselves a nice house here that overlooks the river couple of houses up there that you could live in yeah there we go see another house and we'll come up here and uh, this will be the gate that would leave the city yeah, it continues out um, I was going to continue this road on and up to the next place in this island but uh, I kind of abandoned this island along with this city uh, simply because uh, the other island grew into something absolutely insane. And so that's where I spend most of my time. But uh, I really needed to share this with you. This, of course, is the fort that overlooks the gate, like you see here. Yeah. And then this will continue on up. And it will take us along the wall to the Miller's and some of the farmland that we have out here just north of the city or just above the city near the clock tower yeah and that would continue on down to fjords sipright if we followed this path down but we're not going to keep going that direction we're going to head back because uh, we're getting close to the end and i don't want to make this last any longer than it needs to but this is such an amazing city because uh, we're getting about the time where it's going to look really, really cool. So we will cross this big, giant river bridge just at sunset to this side of the city and through the forest gate, which will wrap around sort of back to where we were. We were just up over there when we first started. And we'll wrap around. Uh-oh. There we go. And then we'll come through this little area of the city. This is sort of like the uh, poor side of town. Just like you see here. Where the... hey, look at that. Yeah. Fun, fun. I want to kind of get out on the docks. We could come through here. We'll see like the Riverside Ferry. Yeah, see there's a ferry here that would travel across the river. If you needed to this goes under the bridge yeah such a fun city to build but I do want to get out over the seawall just as the Sun is setting because man does this city look really cool in the dark forest at night such a cool city over the drawbridge there are no drawbridges in the game but 
I made it happen. Made it look as much like a drawbridge as I could. I think I did it a, a, an all right job. But we'll head out here to the fort, the sea fort, and have a look at the city as the sun sets. Yeah, such a good time to go through the city. So what we're going to do is we are going to hit Free Fly. Oops, misspelled that. Need to spell that properly. We're going to hit Free Fly so that we can do a little bit of flying around the city like so. So you guys can see some of the uh, panoramics from above the city. Oh yeah, see now the sun's going down. Perfect time to be doing the flybys here on Nordvale. The city looks so good at night uh, with the eternal torches on so you can see all the lights sort of speckled throughout the, uh, the darkness of the dark forest. It gets even better sometimes when it's nice and there's a low mist that settles across the city. Very cool. But yeah, guys, that is Njordvale. I want to thank you all for coming along. And uh, I hope you like and subscribe and uh, look for more of my cities uh, in the future. But until then, you all have a wonderful day.